Hey, fifth grade scientists, this is Miss Baldry. Hey, this week we are going to continue our work on weathering and erosion and go a little bit deeper into chemical and mechanical weathering. And we're going to just explore a little bit deeper with the differences with weathering versus erosion. So, weathering is the breaking down of rocks through different processes. So, one way weathering takes place is by rocks sitting against other rocks when they're rolling down stream. And even though they're being carried downstream, that part would be erosion, they're still hitting against each other. So the breaking down part is the weathering. And when they are broken into smaller sediments, that is weathering. So weathering on Earth's surface is happening all the time. And sometimes it happens really slowly, and we don't even notice that it's happening. And it could even take hundreds or even thousands or millions of years for weathering to happen. And other times it's happening really quickly. So we're going to call those slow changers or fast changers. So weathering is broken down into two components that we're going to learn about. Um, the physical, which is also called mechanical, um, weathering and then there's also the chemical weathering so both of them is a breakdown of, of rocks on earth's surface into smaller pieces of rock or sand and so this happens really because of a change of temperature water wind gravity and just living organisms that break things down so let's look into the mechanical which is also called physical weathering so this is when rocks are torn apart by some type of a physical force. So think of something that makes the rocks crumble. So the examples could be um, a fluctuation in temperature. So it's cold at night, it might rain, you've got water that seeps into the cracks, it freezes, and then it warms up in the morning. And then it freezes again at night and kind of pushes those cracks a little bit bigger. So um, that would also be the ice expanding in cracks. But just that change of temperature really is really hard on those rocks. Um, wind hitting the side of rocks. So especially um, think of like canyons. That's how a lot of the canyons were made and beautiful arches down in like Moab and um, St. George area, southern Utah. A lot of those arches are formed because of wind hitting them. Um, salt wedging. So salt is oftentimes in our rain. So when it rains, it's got little tidbits of salt. It gets stuck in the rocks and it wedges them apart. Um, plant activity. You've all seen when there is um, a plant or little, um, little trees or something that have like sprouted in the middle of a sidewalk or a playground or um, a road or something and all of a sudden you see something like that has just grown and busted open something. So again, mechanical is physical force. Um, also animal activity. So animals really like to burrow in the ground. They like to make their little paths and so that could totally break things down. So here's a couple of pictures for you to really get this mechanical weathering. So this is a great picture of just a little plant that's like grown into a crack and it's the more it grows, the bigger it gets. It's busting open that rock. This is lichen. We don't pronounce it lichen or lichen. It's lichen. So it has the hard K sound like in the CH in Christmas. Um, so lichen or moss likes to really grow on rocks and they really start to break them down. So that's mechanical weathering. It's breaking down a rock into smaller rocks. This is just another great example. You can see some plant life around there. So some type of a mechanical weathering where it actually crushed the big boulder. Frost broke these rocks. It used to be something bigger. And check this out. Do you see this tree stump? Is that wild and crazy? Holy cow, that is just like smashed that big rock. And it has been 
just growing around it. You see this on the side of buildings all the time that um, you just see part of the building crumbling. Well, frost has done this. So again, mechanical weathering, something that's um, broken down rock, but it's out of physical force, like kind of a meanie here. So the second type of weathering we're going to learn about this week is chemical weathering. And this is actually when the surface of the rock actually changes. So think of it starting off of one type of rock and then totally having like a, a change and it ends up being something totally different. So something, some chemical has attacked the rock and the minerals inside of it and it actually like totally changes. So water can be that chemical on some rocks. So a couple of really good examples are oxidation and acid rain. And we did our experiment with acid rain, how limestone affected, was affected by vinegar. So this is a great example of oxidation. So this has happened because this rock has some iron inside of it um, as some of the, the components, some of the minerals, and then when it broke open, then the iron was exposed and oxygen totally took its toll. So you can see it looks like it starts to rust, and that's oxidation. So we'll see a few pictures here of that. Looks really cool, I think. So this is limestone, but it was dissolved in groundwater, so it actually causes sinkholes. So you can kind of see that cave there. So that's like all this rock is kind of dissolved and bam, it like starts the ground sinking. There. This is a great example. This isn't a rock, but this is an example of oxidation. So you see um, rust on a car. That's what oxidation is. So oxidation actually happens on vehicles oftentimes because during the winter months, um, the road crew, they put salt all over our roads to melt the snow. And so when that salt gets splashed up on your car, sometimes it will kind of make its way under the paint and it will start to rust your car. Same thing happens with rocks. You'll see little like red spots and that's oxidation. Waters dissolve this limestone. You look, it looks like there's holes and that's because the water is reacted with this limestone and it is actually breaking it down. So it's changed the surface. So again, chemical weathering is when like the surface is totally changed. Like it turns into something totally different. Um, we see this a ton, chemical weathering on in cemeteries. So headstones that were made out of limestone or marble really get have been broken down. And so they make a lot of headstones out of granite actually now. So you can kind of see on the sides how it actually starts changing colors. So chemicals is there's actually like a total change of something. And then this is just another example of oxidation, how there is some rust um, minerals in this rock and the exposure to air is the oxygen, which is why you call oxidation. All right, um, I've got a couple videos for you, or at least one. Um, so that's weathering where rocks are broken down into smaller rocks. Erosion is it being carried away, those broken pieces washed away or moved. And so what moves it? Ice or water or wind or gravity. So here, this is water, like a, you know, a flood or something is broken through the soil. This is cool. This is an ice erosion. So this is a glacier. And glaciers are moving so, so slow. So here it's moving so, it's moved so slow. It took millions of years to do that. And, um, and it carries with it big chunks, right? This is a really cool picture in southern Utah. This is wind erosion. So right here, this is wind. So little grains of sand over many, 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 many years have just brushed into this rock and chipped off little pieces here and there. And this one's probably one of my favorites, the Great Sphinx uh, with pyramids um, over in Egypt. So look at his poor little face and his body. 
what's happened here this is wind erosion so it's it's um actually carried off chunks of his face we've got some water erosion here those holes weren't there before but water is moving really quickly through this landslides whoa people didn't do that this was erosion remember rocks being moved so there was weathering that happened first something that broke down little chunks <clears throat> excuse me and then something happened um, gravity pulled all that rock down and some wind erosion you can actually see sediments in the air right there all right boys and girls for the next few minutes we're going to watch this video on erosion and weathering oh you forgot to turn off the tap the soap has been weathered and eroded by the water i don't look surprised yes the soap has been weathered and eroded by water so your lesson starts now take the soap with you so let's learn about weathering and erosion remember two secret codes the weathering code is breaking and the erosion code is to take away Remember, weathering and erosion keep happening from moment to moment, like big rocks, which keep getting broken, and small parts of rocks, which are continually carried away by water or wind forces. Yeah, you're right. Weathering and erosion happened to this soap, and it was caused by water. Water first broke the soap, and then carried away the broken part. Can you give some more examples? Oh, yes. You are causing weathering when you break the rock. Yes, the wind has taken away the broken parts, which is erosion. Weathering and erosion cause many changes all around us. Look at these pictures. Mountains, rivers, and many more things keep changing their size and shape due to weathering and erosion. I hope this far we have understood the difference between weathering and erosion. Now let's learn more about how it happens in nature. First, let's look at weathering. Weathering can be caused by many factors. For example, water breaks down rocks and soil in two different ways. One way is when it rains, water seeps through rocks from small cavities. In the night, when the temperature becomes lower, the water freezes. This frozen water needs more space, so it puts pressure on the surrounding rock, which then breaks down. Yep, you're right. It's like putting a nail in the rock, and then the rock breaks down when it tries to make space for the nail. There is another way in which water causes weathering. Water in the river breaks the soil on the sides by first making it soft and wet. Plants are also responsible for weathering. See, a plant is growing on a rock. Its roots are going deep in search of water. The roots are trying to make space to grow further, which results in cracks and breakdown in the rocks. Another cause of weathering is wind. Wind carries a lot of dust and sand particles. When these particles keep hitting the rocks year after year, gradually the rocks wear down. Yes, it's the same as sharpening the lead of a pencil with a piece of sandpaper. As the grains of sand in the sandpaper rub against the lead over and over, the lead begins to break down. So weathering can be caused by water, wind, or even plants. And you saw that temperature can also play a role since water freezes at low temperatures. This kind of weathering is called physical weathering. There is another kind of weathering called chemical weathering. There are many gases and many minerals in our environment. They keep reacting to each other, and many times it causes weathering. For example, when oxygen reacts with iron minerals within rocks, it forms rust. This can also result in the breaking of rocks. Sometimes chemicals in our atmosphere combine with water, which causes acid rain. These acid rains are also responsible for weathering. So now you understand two different kinds of weathering. But remember, in nature, this breaking down does not happen in days or months. It takes hundreds, thousands, or sometimes millions of years. <laughs> now, let's move to erosion. Erosion happens in many ways. It keeps happening together along with weathering, like the soil on the riverside, which is first broken by the pressure of the water, and then falls down into the river where water carries it to different places. Wind also plays a major role in carrying away broken particles. See here, a farmer is plowing his field. This plowing causes many broken soil particles, which are then carried away by the strong wind. So we learned today that weathering and erosion are two major factors which keep changing the world around us, and they keep working together at the same time. Also, we learned about different kinds of weathering and erosion. Are you ready for your test now? All right, scientists, we'll see you in science this week. Take care.